Hello, everybody. Welcome in for another edition of the Rocky Top Roundtable. I'm your host, Austin Price, joined by Brent Hubbs, Rob Lewis, and Eric Kane on this North Carolina State Week. And guys, it's obviously a big one. It's a neutral site game. Uh, before we get going talking about the matchup, what, what do we think crowd-wise here? Do we think this is going to be pretty 50-50? Do we think this shades towards Tennessee or what? I, I think it shades towards Tennessee, personally. I mean, I think NC State will be there, but um, I saw some empty seats in Raleigh for the opener. I didn't see a lot of empty seats in Inland Stadium for the opener. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm biased, but I'll, I'll be surprised if Tennessee doesn't have more. And the fact that it's NC State, the game's in Charlotte, you know, gives you some pause, but I, I still will be surprised if the Big Orange State Nation is not in the majority. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking 60-40. I thought Tennessee would, you know, we know Tennessee will travel well, and I, I wouldn't surprise me at all if Tennessee goes about 60-40. I've been a lot of people buy, looking for some tickets after Saturday watching yeah. Nico play, too. Yeah. <laughs> no saying. doubt about it, especially if you're over towards that way in the Western Carolina area and you got to, you know, stay on that side of the mountain and go watch the balls play. Uh, Nico, you, you talk about him. I mean, he was fantastic. 22-28, uh, the school record for yards and a half, of 314 yards, three touchdowns, and uh, just got the ball out. On time, where it needed to be, great placement, and it has plenty of weapons. You know, Rob, I thought maybe the best comment, and there's been tons of things about Nico all week long on social media from analysts, former players, and everything else, but maybe the best quote or the best comment on Nico since the game was the answer to your question um, to, to Kelsey Pope on Tuesday about what it's like for the receivers to play with Nico. Yeah, I mean, he got animated. I mean, I just, I just asked him, you know, when you, when you have a guy out there putting it on time, putting it where it's supposed to be, giving you a chance to make plays, what kind of sense of urgency does that give you as a receiver? And, boy, he was ready. I mean, he was passionate about it, talking about, you know, these guys want to play for number eight. They love it. You know, that it gives them a sense of urgency. And, I mean, I, I think that's real. I mean, I, I, I think when, you, when you're Dante Thornton and you know if I get the point X where I'm supposed to be, you know, that ball's going to be there and I got a chance to run after the catch. I mean, that's a, that's a motivator. And I, I think that you're seeing that. You know, it's one game and we're all, you know, kind of hyped. But, but, you know, I, I think it's real. And it's not just here in Knoxville that you're hearing the hype. It's, injuries are part of the game. So, you know, guys are going to get hurt. But it goes back to what we said all preseason. You know, a receiver better not miss a day because – you got Squirrel in there in the slot. Chaz Nimrod is more than capable of playing the slot. Dante Thornton right there. He technically didn't start the game, but he was the story of the game. Chris Brazel had a great debut. Brew looked explosive. Mike Matthews is itching to get in there. Caleb Webb played. I mean, there's so many different guys that want to be a part of this explosive offense and want to be a part of what Nico's doing at quarterback. And we'll see, you know, from week one to week two, of course, the competition is going to get greater. But, yeah, I think, I think everybody on offense and everybody on this team is excited to play with Nico. This will be Nico's third career start. And realistically, two of the three will have been kind of bowl-type atmospheres. Mm -hmm. The bowl game and then Saturday will feel very much like a bowl game, the way the crowd's set up and all that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that – and I don't think Nico's going to be bothered by any kind of crowd in a neutral site deal, and, and nor should you be. Um, I, I thought they were fast. I thought they were efficient. I thought he was in total command. And I think they're going to play really fast on Saturday. I think they're going to try to tax NC State right out of the gate – I think tempo could be a factor in this game, and I like the tempo that Nico had them playing with as this game got started against uh, Chattanooga on Saturday. I mean, they were they were hot and ready to go out of the gate. I, mean, I thought that was noteworthy because you know you, him him making some big plays, receivers you know catching deep balls. I mean, that, that could happen just personnel wise. It was a mismatch, but the operations were smooth. I mean, whether you're playing Chattanooga or Alabama, I mean, how fast it takes you to get to the line of scrimmage and in and out of you know of what you're doing that doesn't change. And I thought Nico was impressive. I'll tell you what else was impressive. is just Tennessee's efficiency in the run game. Um, Tennessee did a nice job. Dylan Sampson over 120 yards. Uh, Deshaun Bishop averaged 12 yards a carry, five carries for 60 yards. Cam Selden was at, you know, he was like at, what, seven or eight yards carry, <laughs> yeah. like, which was like terrible for like the game overall, but it was still fantastic any other time. Uh, I think that can also help, you know, Nico, you know, in any environment, but specifically in his first big test as the starter. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, a quarterback's best friend, it's the run game, right? It's also a veteran offensive line. It's also a fifth-year center in Cooper Mays, four-year starter. It's also Brew McCoy on the outside and all these weapons. So, you know, what Tennessee did in the run game against Chattanooga, don't hear me wrong. I mean, every defense Tennessee plays this year is going to be better than Chattanooga. They're going to be quicker. They're going to be more athletic. But Tennessee's got that ability to run with Dylan Sampson. I really like what I saw from Deshaun Bishop. And Cam Seldon, yeah, he averaged – felt like he didn't do much, but he averaged seven, eight yards a pop coming back not having a whole lot of contact in fall camp. So 
Still a very unproven room outside of Dylan Sampson, but in week one that looked great, and it should help Nico throughout the year. I think the challenge is, that, and Dave Dorn talked about this in his press conference, when you're, you're having to defend all parts of the field now. You're having to defend sideline to sideline, which has always been a mainstay. You throw in the middle of the field, which Tennessee showed that they can get the ball there in the passing game because Nico is 10 of 10 there. You're going to have to make a choice, Austin. I mean, you lighten the box. Josh Heupel's made it very clear in three-plus years here. He's going to run, run the, the football. Ball. He's, he has no. no problem handing it off. You want to go and condense that box and add extra people in there and, and try to stop that run game that way? He doesn't have any problem throwing it over your head, whether it's a seam to the tight end or a takeoff or whatever. I mean, I'm not saying Tennessee's unstoppable. I'm saying you're going to have to pick your poison, and it's going to be an interesting decision that NC State makes. Tennessee offensively can hit that tempo early, and then if the defense – can get off the field and put that North Carolina State defense right back out there, I think that's where you start to cook with grease. Because all of a sudden you're compounding the problems for NC State twofold because they can't sustain a drive and you're having success with the tempo wearing out the defense. Well, that's, I mean, that's what Tennessee does, Rob. And, and I thought, we talked about this in the podcast, but I, what lends itself to that, maybe it was a one game blunder, maybe they'll be better. NC State gave up nine tackles for a loss to Western Carolina, which, I mean, that's a big number in, in that kind of matchup. Tennessee, the, with, with that front seven, that, that, that number bodes really well for me I, I, when you're talking about getting off the field, creating negative plays, putting people in third and six, third and seven. I mean, if, you, if Tennessee can create negative plays in the first, first down, second down, that's, that could be a long day for NC State. And, and trying to keep that defense on the field for uh, NC State, going back to what we said earlier in the week, um, it was 19 total players that uh, NC State played against Western Carolina. Tennessee played 47 against Chattanooga. Tennessee won't play 47 in this game, but Tennessee played 30 players in the first quarter. 30 players will absolutely play on defense in this game because they rotate up front, they rotate their backers, and there'll be a couple guys that rotate in the back end. Tennessee will stay fresh, continue to um, put it to NC State's offense and make things difficult. But that West, or excuse me, that NC State defense, coupled with the tempo and coupled with their small rotations, if Tennessee does get out there, hit that tempo hard, and score a couple of times, it could be a long day at the yard for the Wolfpack defense. Do, do we think, however, that that they will, you know, have Boo or whoever's in the slot follow Concepcion around, or will it be somebody different every play that is trying to match up with North Carolina State's best weapon? I, I think that's going to be a, a, you know, when you start getting into the baseball numbers, as Rob likes to talk about, when you start diving into it deep. I think that's going to be an interesting matchup. Do, do they travel the nickel, the, the, the star position guy, when, when Concepcion goes in motion? Do they pass it off? What do they feel most comfortable with? Uh, of all the things that you come out of Saturday and you feel great about so much of it, you just don't know exactly where they are in the secondary. And NC State is going to challenge you and stress you, Rob, in different places because they're going to get it to Concepcion on fly sweeps. They're going to get it underneath. All different types of things that are going to challenge your underneath coverage that was not tested at all on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, I mean, they weren't bad. Like you say, they just weren't tested. You don't know. With five new starters, you know, five and a half or six, when you count the nickel, whether it's Boo or Harrison, and the guy in, in that passing game is Concepcion, the slot guy, who they can move around. It's Yeah, that's going to be something to watch. But, again, like we've talked about, I think it's, it's good to be catching this team in week two where Grayson McCall and Concepcion and Dave Dort, everybody's still figuring out how things work together. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a big point, you know, getting them in week two, because on paper they should be a pretty good ball club. We'll see if it translates. Uh, but something, Brent, you said uh, in regards to Concepcion earlier in the week, they're going to line them up, they're going to do a little bit of everything. When they run those, those posts, or not posts, excuse me, the slants or drags or crossers, even if you're playing zone underneath, if you're a linebacker, say, if you're playing zone, you have your drop coverage. But when a guy comes in your zone and you treat it like, man, you go up, you collision him because you're a linebacker, use your hands, don't get called. But knock him off his route and mess up the timing. I think that's going to be critical for a guy like Concepcion, who's a really, really good playmaker, to help out those defensive backs in man coverage. Brent brought up a great point uh, earlier in the week. The, the use of Dylan Sampson out of the backfield catching the ball is something this offense just hasn't utilized as much but that's I mean that's a big part of his game I mean he's fantastic at, at being patient and letting linemen that get downfield set up blocks and that type of thing I think that's a, a hidden stat in this game I, I really do I think his ability to catch little flare passes or catch dump passes when the big play is not there uh, could 
be the difference in extending a drive or two, which could mean the difference in seven to ten points. Well, the check down is always a quarterback's best friend if a quarterback's willing to use it. A lot of quarterbacks don't want to use it. You know, how much how much does Nico use that when um, someone's covered vertically down the field and what they're trying to get done? I think he's comfortable doing that. I think Dylan Sampson's really good out in space, and I think that's something else th that you have to defend with, with Tennessee if you're an opposing defense, and I think that's a just another problem area that you can create issues with. I mean, Tennessee's got the drop back game. They can go power in the run game, Rob. They can go straight RPO. They can run stretch and zone in the run game. They have a lot of diversity that they can be offensively. Now, you've got to execute it, but you can be a lot more diverse than you were a year ago. And, and Ethan Davis, we don't even talk about right. him. I mean, never had it. And, you know, in year four, never had a guy like that at tight end. I mean, I don't, I don't know what they can do with him. I mean, I, I, mean, I bet. You know, Josh probably doesn't know what they could do with it exactly, but I mean that's another another wrinkle that you know he caught two passes last week, but who knows what that guy could be in this offense? And I think we're all excited about Ethan Davis and the tight ends in the passing game, no doubt. But the, what the tight ends did in the running game against Chattanooga was was really really cool. Uh, return of the split zone a little bit. You have him as an H back, kind of motion him in a little bit. He's leading up on that backer. The running backs coming in right behind him. Um, I thought Miles Kitzelman, I thought Holden Stays, and Ethan Davis all showed some good ability there in the run game, and that's something that Jacob Warren and you know really Princeton fan a couple of years ago did exceptionally well in the run game. To your point, Austin, they just have a lot of things to pick from. The toolbox mm -hmm. has got a lot of tools in it right now. It's the cheesecake factory menu. It is. I mean, it's, I mean, I make fun of coaches with Waffle House menus on them. That this man, they might need one of those for them because they can go a lot of different ways depending on how a defense wants to try to play you. It is Tennessee, it's NC State, it's Saturday at 7.45 from Charlotte. For the guys, we'll talk to you on the General's Quarters.